Hello everybody, welcome to Gabby's Art Studio. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to do another watercolour. Just playing around with one. I'm going to try and play around just with one or two blues. Not many colours. Trying to use limited resources here. Um, and so at the moment I'm just taping down some BFK um, watercolour paper or printing paper. It's quite thick. It's made of recycled rags and um, <clears throat> a lot of professional artists and printmakers use it as well. So I'm just going to give this a go and see what happens um, with the actual watercolour. So it's just working from my imagination. I've come back from a six months travelling around Europe and I've got lots of fantastic images um, that I work with, either from, my imagin from, from what I can remember or from my photographs. So I saw some beautiful things while traveling. So some of the actual brushes I intend to use is this um, West Art series Hake number one. You can get them in different sizes. Um, this is an old brush but East Art Artist Status. I use this with my students and that's about a number 10. And um, Art Spectrum and these ones are probably the fa my favorite brushes. These are the um, Art Spectrum Squirrel Mop brushes from Germany. They're just gorgeous. You can see the difference here where you know it's quite a wide bristle here but it goes into such a fine tip so you can do a lot with it you can work with um, you know big areas and then come into a really fine line if you need to and this one here is more for um, applying just big areas it just, you won't get the tip you'll get a little bit of a tip but not much so if you're looking at for details when you don't have brushes like this you need to buy lots of little brushes but these are great you don't need that many of them Okay, so what I'm going to do is I've got some just clear water. Normally I just work with, um, you know, like clear water and then have two containers of water. One where I brush, wash my brush out if I'm using another colour and one where I do a water wash. So, um, so I'm going to wash the background out. And I've um, also used Spectrum watercolours. There's a number of different ones that you can use. These ones here. AS and this is phalo blue and um, a spectrum blue it's almost like a cobalt blue these two blues I will use um, to see how I go to start with you can also get them in different brands just depends on what you have and what you prefer okay so first I'm just going to wash the sky in and see what happens here okay I'm not going to go right down I might just oops what you don't want is that to happen. I've got it on a bit of a tilt. I actually want the, when I, I'm going to try and apply the paint quite loosely and I want it to sort of flow down really easily because I find that when I, dry, when I paint flat, it doesn't flow down as much as I want it to. So I'll we'll wait and see what happens. I've got a tiny little, using a little chocolate container here as recycling and uh, little palettes rather than going and buying one okay so I've got quite a lovely blue now if you just want to test the color out you can just get an old piece of paper okay, this will do on the side you pop that on the side and just you know that's quite a nice blue There's another blue there as well it's a bit darker so again you don't need a lot of color at all so I'm just going to make sure that that is still quite wet I can see it's already started to dry like so and because I'm as my I say to my students I'm fluffing around okay so let's go let's see what happens okay so I might use something bigger than the squirrel brush and just apply it to the background and allow it to do its thing so I just can Now sometimes you need to get the tilt right as well with this. So I can see already that the areas where it stays white are the areas that, um, you know, they weren't wet. So for instance, over here. All right. So, and the reason why that's run is because it, it, it was wet. So that's why. 
So sometimes this is a draft board. I need to actually adjust this, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to leave it for now. I kind of like that. Now, if you want, you can use... You have to work pretty quickly with this. You can use a little bit of paper towel and absorb it. If you wanted to put a few clouds in, just roll it across the top like so. might just because it's pooling I might just absorb some of that okay and then with a smaller brush just run across it or even just using just run across it like so so if you don't want any what they call cauliflowers you can do that to it Okay, so I had a little bit of a darker blue on the end of my brush up there. And as it starts to dry, you don't want to fiddle with it. I always say, don't fiddle, don't fiddle, don't fiddle. And one of my dearest watercolour friends taught me that. Don't fiddle, don't fiddle, don't fiddle. Um, and I'm sure she got it from somebody else as well. Okay, so unlike the other papers, um, this absorbs the paper, the inks really, really quickly and you need to work really, really fast. So I would dry that off now. Um, and then I'll, I've only done half, so this half over here is quite dry. You're not meant to fiddle with it, and I've just done exactly what I've been telling everybody not to do. All right, go like that. Okay, so it's it's, it's kind of dry. It dries up pretty quickly, actually. And um, what I should have done is probably put a really nice border, um, which I could possibly still do. All right, so I might just add a little bit of, um, really roughly, add some water here. Not a lot. And I might just intensify the blue a little bit more. There's a, in my little chocolate box here that I've recycled. There's a little bit of a different blue. So I might just add that to where it's wet. Let's see what happens. Oops. drag it across if you want leave it a little bit white and this is where you might add a little bit of detail Um, you can either add Payne's Grey or um, a little bit of black. So before it dries, I might just pop, drop some of the black colour. See, I don't have hardly anything left in here. But just before it dries, you might just put a little bit of black in here. Do something just a tiny. on the edges so ever so subtle Right. 
you might want to wipe some of it back before it actually dries. starting to fiddle too much with it. I probably should have left it white a little bit up here just to show a little bit more of a horizon line. Okay, but you can just, um, you know, if you want to just sweep some colour across it so it's not too white, if that's the case. Because it does lift some of the pigment up. Every time I look at this, I find other things I could do to it. I'm sort of seeing a bit of a, these cauliflowers that are occurring, I'm quite liking. Um, they look like little distant sort of trees in the background. So, and what you can do is you can even use a needle. So I might see if I've got a little bit of a toothpick somewhere. And here we go. You can scrape it back so see what happens. You actually have to whoops. Oh dear. So you can scrape some of the paper off, like so, if you want to. Sometimes some of the artists use an actual blade and they'll just draw a line across it as well. Um, I suggest that it's probably done better if it's dry um, and maybe by, by what we call scoring the paper you're going to create a bit of a horizon line in there but I think I've achieved that without using the white by just adding a little bit of Payne's grey in here even in here you might want to put a you know, a bit more white. You can put a little bit of white paint if you wish. I just wanted to show you what you can actually do by scratching it out. And you get a bit of a textured effect there too. I don't... So, I'm just going to peel some of the paper back. See what happens. Yeah, it gives you a bit of a, a texture. Oops, peel a little bit too much there. So now I'm working sort of wet on dry rather than wet on wet. And that's about it really. Don't think I want to do too much to it so I can just um, maybe lift a bit of the sky a bit more. So if I want to lift a bit of the paint, you can actually buy stuff that bleaches back into the paper if you want. But I'm just going to lift it and then um, I don't want cauliflowers. So once you lift it, you wet it, you've got to wet it again. So with this sort of thing, it takes a lot of practice in that you have to work pretty fast um, to get you know the right amount of light and dark in the in the actual watercolor painting but sometimes you know you, you have ideas and and they don't work out exactly it doesn't really matter because that's the beauty about 
these sorts of little paintings. They're original. They're totally original because you can never really replicate the mark making at all. Um, and that's the great thing. So all of them become very, very different. Um, so, yeah, so even like, you know, um, even using the end of a brush. Give us a like if you like the video.